absolutely stunning, Pat. Thank you so much. And in that vein, I'll now invite Reverend John Scott to the podium to give us today's encouragement. Please help me welcome Reverend John. The only other time in our more than 39 years that I can remember that the temple had to be closed was in 2004. At that time, renovations were being done, and I knew it was for a specific time and with a specific outcome in mind. So there was a sense of excited anticipation. Over the past three months with our forced closure, I have come to realize how very, very much I identify with our spiritual home. I mean the physical structure itself, the environment in which it is set, the gardens, and above all, the spiritual family that I have encountered and made here in this special place. In a very real sense, my friends, the Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living represents for me a doorway Yes, a portal, an entrance to higher consciousness. For it is here that I have learned to open my spiritual eyes to reveal the living sanctuary that I desire to be as a minister of truth. It is here that I have learned to accept people for who they are. My, my flatmate, Tony Henry, said something so profound the other morning. We were talking about issues and you know, challenges that we have with the love streaming and getting it all together. And he said, you know, I realize that everybody has their eccentricities. I said, why are you looking at me? But when I feel that they're getting to me, I just return to principle. I return to the knowledge that Everybody is a special and unique and beautiful creation of something that is greater than we all are. It's not just a lovely thing to, uh, to remind ourselves of. Everybody has their own little isms and schisms and ways. You too. And if you can just remind yourself that, yes, here is another child of God like myself on a pathway. Let me open the door of my heart and let them in. Let me open my consciousness and listen deeply from here instead of just thinking about what's the next smart thing I'm going to say to put them down. Can I make people, even when I'm correcting them, can I find it within myself that when I've made that correction, they leave my presence feeling uplifted and like valid, valuable, and authentic members of this community rather than feeling put down and that, wow, I've messed up again. It's a tall order, you know, even for the minister, but we have to practice. And so today, as I rededicate myself to opening my heart, my consciousness, and my way of ministering, I have titled my encouragement, as I call my Sunday morning messages, Open the Doors of the Temple. Because you see, my friends, I see each of us in this teaching as a doorway to truth. It brings to mind the beautiful words of Psalm 24, I think it's verse 7, that says, and I quote, Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. You are the gates. Lift up your head. And the king of glory, the king of truth, the king of your being, that which created you out of itself, will enter into your consciousness and fill you with such grace and such beauty and such peace and such joy that you will know that you are here on a special mission. So my friends, we need to open the doors of the temple. We open the gates of our consciousness 
to let out that which no longer serves us and to let in the beauty of God's truth and the, just the radiance that emanates from each and every person. Much of what our spiritual path is all about, my friends, is the breaking down of interior walls. And many of us have built such sturdy walls, haven't we, to protect our fragile egos. We have built walls of fear, walls of doubt, walls of resentment, and walls of self-rejection. But there is a door to your heart. There is a door to your spirit. There is a gate to the temple of your being that if you will open it, the king of glory, the king of joy, the king of love shall enter and change and transform every facet and every relationship and every aspect of your life, no matter what the situations are in the outer world. In the science of mind and spirit, how we achieve this breakthrough is significant. You see, our approach is positive and simple. Rather than attempt to break down our psychology bit by bit, we begin with a premise, that is, that there is, exists within us a natural access to higher awareness. We might think of it as a doorway to God or to the true self of your being. So by turning our attention inward and declaring, I am one with God, we begin to move through that doorway into the recognition of our own inherent wholeness. I came across a website named wanttoknow.info. And one article in that, that website talks about the wonderful ways in which the internet provides us with the ability to link with people all across the globe who want a world that works for all. And we have all been experiencing that, particularly at this time. It makes the point that in addition to the technology, there's an even more powerful energy field, which it calls, and I love this, it calls it the inner net. So we have the internet, and we have the internet. Let me read you just one paragraph about the internet, and I quote, as we recognize the common humanity that lies within each of our hearts, we are now awakening to something even more powerful than the internet, the inner net. Modern science is showing how there is a measurable energy field that emanates from each of our hearts. These inevitable energy fields each of us has are interacting with those around us all the time. Science is showing how we are all energetically interconnected. This energetic connection happens through what some are now calling the inner net. And so my friends, every one of us can choose to open that place where we all already are interconnected in a global web of, of, of interrelatedness. We can just close our eyes and going within, we can feel this connection with all beings on our planet and even with the planet itself. The internet connects the hearts of all of us through these energetic fields. And as each of us chooses to recognize and transform the shadows within us, we join in strengthening the internet and transforming the collective shadow of our planet so that we can all live with greater awareness and help to transform our world, making it one that works for all. You know, for the past several weeks, I've been participating in a group meditation led by temple member Marguerite Orain, who is studying to become a meditation teacher. In fact, today is her graduation, so congratulations, Margie. And I noticed something when, when I've been sharing with this group every week, and it is this the internet becomes more palpable. You become more aware of this connection. It, it, is, it is, you can actually feel it binding you together with cords of everlasting unity. Because you see, friends, there are no walls between us and our source. There's a doorway, a gate to the temple of our life. Let us resolve then to open the gates of the temple to reveal an expanded consciousness, an increased capacity for more love, more good, more joy, more peace, more power, and yes, more compassion. 
Indeed, if you open the gates of the temple and go to the source of your self-identity, God rushes from within to meet you, and it makes its qualities known to you and raises your, your vibration. And lest I forget, here is your assignment. You thought I was going to forget. Regulars at the Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living know I always give an assignment. And here's what I want you to do this week. I want you to set your intention to strengthen your internet and your interconnected with friends and loved ones by inviting at least two people who are not familiar with our teaching to join you for a watch party to view our spiritual mind healing service this Tuesday evening at 6 o'clock uh, Eastern Standard Time. Our speaker will be Reverend Anne Shand, whose internet is well grounded in spirit. And if those you invite are not familiar with our teaching and they want to know what to expect, tell them that our ministry is based on the spiritual gifts upon, upon which Jesus the Way Shower based his ministry. And those gifts are prayer, teaching, healing, and holy fellowship. Prayer, teaching, healing, and holy fellowship. Affirmative prayer or spiritual mind treatment as we call it is our hallmark and the best of what we can offer the world because we pray positively. We don't pray the problem, we pray the solution. We pray the truth that God is more powerful than anything that we face. And in the area of teaching, we like to we take great pride in the outstanding spiritual education available in our classes, and even greater pride, perhaps, in the greatest thing we teach here at the Temple of Light, which is love. Because when you open the gates of the temple of your heart, that's what you find pouring out from you in, in, in streams of light and, and love and joy. Love, which transforms all things unlike itself. And then healing takes place not just in our physical bodies, but also in the body of our affairs. And the Holy Fellowship, which has been particularly, for me, strong over these past few months that we've been able to touch physically, I have felt a closeness and a, a, a bonding with people as we have reached out our circle of love calls. People have been calling each other and just saying, how are you? And you're in my heart and you're in my prayer. So in, in this holy fellowship, we embody the practice of beholding the Christ in each and every person. I had a powerful experience of that um, on Friday afternoon when I, a policeman stopped me um, at the intersection near to where I live. The minute he stopped me, I knew why. I had licensed the car for the next year, but I had not put on the disc. I was waiting for some alcohol. To, to wipe off the old one. So it was in my papers, but it wasn't on. And he said in the gentlest voice, he was wearing a mask, when you turn the corner, would you just please pull over on the left? So I did. And he said, can I see your, your papers? And I gave him my license and the papers. And he said, oh, I see you live, you live close by here. What do you do? And I said, I'm a minister of religion. I can pray for you, you know. And his eyes were twinkling above the mask, you know. It's, it's lovely now that you can't see people's um, full face, look into their eyes. It's amazing. They really are the windows of the soul. And so I never took my eyes off of his. And as he was opening my papers, out fell the disc. And he said, aha, this is why I stopped you. And I said, yes, you know, I've, my bad, my bad. I've been wanting to use some alcohol to wipe the windshield, but all I have at home is vodka, and I have other ideas of how to use that. So I was just heading to the pharmacy to buy some rubbing alcohol. And he said, he was so sweet, he said, let me put it on for you. There are some police at the other stop sign and they're going to stop you. And he slipped into the, the passenger seat beside me and affixed the disc to my windshield. Wow. Talk about internet connections. Eh? I said, why him wasn't one of them that did stop Floyd? What him named him? So, you know, my friends, when you practice this opening up of yourself, when you take off the mask, not the one on your face, which you must wear 
uh, to protect others and to protect yourself. But that mask that you have around your heart so that people can see your vulnerability and who you really are and that you are willing to stand up and say, I am love. Simia, just, just, just use all the love you need right now. Use all the love that you can, you can, you can mine from the, the depths of my own being. You just fish it out like you do a, a bucket at a well and drink deeply of the love that I offer from the chalice of my own life in the temple of my own existence. I am willing to be open so that you can come in and we can fellowship in that holy coming together, which is our only reason for walking this path known as the science of mind. And so my friends, the Association of Global New Thought puts it like this, and I love this imagery. They say, and I quote, our awakened world is a chalice holding the consciousness of its people, unquote. Wherever you are across the world, my friends, let us open our hearts and minds and consciousness to be the holy and waiting human chalice containing the entire world and all its people with an all-embracing love. That is our mission for the next 39 years. But let us just do it for the next day. One day at a time, we will allow our hearts and our consciousness to be open so that the lights that we shine will illumine the world until there are no dark places. Let us say together, today I dismantle the walls of fear and doubt. Together, today I dismantle the walls of fear and doubt. Today I put on the mantle of my greatness. Today I put on the mantle of my greatness. I open the doors of my consciousness and step into the truth of my being. When people see me, they see the one that sent me. When people see me, they see the one that sent me. For each of us is a temple of light. And finally, today, we open the gates of the temple, and to God be the honor and glory. And today, we open the gates of the temple, and to God be the honor and glory. And so it is. Namaste.